Welcome to Effortless Math Channel. In this video, what I'm going to do is show you how to solve for missing sides in a right triangle. By the end of this video, you should be able to explain how the primary trig ratios relate side lengths and angles in a right triangle, as well as solve for unknown side lengths. The best place to start would be by looking at the Pythagorean theorem, and this will probably be a review for many of you watching this video. But the Pythagorean theorem is a basic relationship that relates the three sides of a right triangle. And that's really important that this, this relationship only holds for right triangles. And the main reason for this is that right triangles have what's called a hypotenuse, and I've labeled that as C in this triangle on the right. And the hypotenuse is the side that's always across from the right angle. So you can't have a hypotenuse if you don't have a right triangle. Now you've probably seen this relationship a squared plus b squared equals c squared and in that relationship c squared refers to the hypotenuse. So just a little bit of a review of the Pythagorean theorem. It makes sense briefly just to look at the Pythagorean theorem and how we can use it to solve for an unknown side length in a right triangle. And that's before we get into applying the primary trig ratios. So if we look at this triangle we have two sides. One of the sides is not the hypotenuse, the other is and we're looking to solve for this unknown side x here. If I write out my Pythagorean theorem relationship, the first thing we have to do is just sub in our side lengths. Now it's worth noting that five is the hypotenuse, so when I sub in five, I have to make sure that I sub it in for the value of c. The four doesn't actually matter where that goes. So I can put it in for a or b. In this case, I'm just arbitrarily going to put it in for a. So I now have a new expression, four squared plus b squared equals five squared. Next, I can apply a little bit of algebra to subtract the four squared over to the other side of the equation, which will result in this expression here, b squared equals five squared minus four squared. Five squared is just 25, and I know four squared is 16. 25 minus 16, of course it's nine. So I end up with a very simple equation, b squared equals nine. And I can, of course, take the square root of both sides to get a result of b equals 3. So that's going to tell me that this unknown side x is equal to 3. But what I really want to do in this video is show you how trigonometric ratios can be used to solve problems where we're looking for a side length. Now, trig ratios are a bit different from the Pythagorean theorem. They relate the side lengths in a right triangle to the angles in a right triangle. The problem that I previously just showed you it did not have any angles, so we couldn't apply trig ratios here. But there's this really handy memory aid for three trigonometric ratios, sine, cosine, and tangent. Those are the names of the three trig ratios we're going to look at in this video. And then each of these specific ratios is just a ratio of two sides in the triangle. And we give those fancy names, sine, cosine, and tangent. These are kind of strange sounding words with seemingly arbitrary ratios. But we can use this memory aid, so katoa, to help us remember what the ratios are for each of these. So sine, S, S is for sine, is equal to the opposite, O, over the hypotenuse, H. So that's how that so works. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is ka, so cosine is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And tan is toa, so that tells us we're looking at the opposite over the adjacent. Now we're already familiar with hypotenuse. Opposite should be fairly intuitive. If you're looking at an angle, we'll call this angle theta, the opposite side length is just going to be across from that angle, so it's opposite that angle. The hypotenuse we know is across from the right angle, and the adjacent side, that might be a new word, is next to our angle. Okay, so that's adjacent. So what I want to do in this video is just show you how to apply a few of these trig ratios to solve for side lengths. And one important thing to note is that when you're working with trig ratios, you should keep your calculator in degree mode, unless, of course, you're, you've studied radian measure. All right, so a couple examples of how to apply these trig ratios to solve for side lengths. My example just says use the appropriate trig ratio to solve for the unknown side length. Taking a look at this triangle, the first thing I notice right away is that I have a right angle. That tells me that I can apply these trig ratios. I can't apply trig ratios to solve triangle problems when a 90 degree angle is not present. So that's the first thing you have to look out for. The next thing is we wanna look at our angle given. So I, I'm given this 28 degree angle and what I want to do is kind of mark up my triangle a bit. I want to look at my triangle and see what sides I'm giving. Okay, well, I'm looking at this side here. I know that that's the opposite side. The X is opposite to the 28 degree angle. So I'm just going to label that with a little O. Okay, that's the opposite side length. I don't have the hypotenuse, so I'm not really interested in any trig ratios that involve the hypotenuse. I don't know what it is, so I can't use it. So that actually, that immediately rules out 
sine and, and cosine, all right, leaving me with tan. But let's just go over that adjacent side quick as well. Looking at this 28 degree angle, right next to it, adjacent to it, is our, our 9.2 side. So I'm gonna circle that, I'm just gonna put an A here for adjacent. So if I have a 28 degree angle, I'm, give, I'm looking at the opposite and the adjacent, I know I'm gonna use the tan ratio. And you remember that the tan ratio is opposite over adjacent. In this case, that would be X over 9.2. So I've now set up this nice little ratio relating the opposite side to the adjacent side. And that's gonna be equal to the tan of 28 degrees. Now in order to solve for X, all I need to do is apply a little bit of simple algebra. On the right side, I have X divided by 9.2. If I wanna get rid of that 9.2, I can just multiply both sides of this equation by 9.2. Okay, and doing that will help me isolate x. At this point, I have a new expression, 9.2 times the tan of 28. What you wanna do at this point is grab your scientific calculator, and most calculators, you can just input this expression exactly how you see it, and that's gonna spit out a nice answer of 4.89 for x. So we've successfully applied the tan ratio here to solve for this unknown side length. Let's take a look at another example. You can see here I've got another 90 degree triangle, so that's great, I know I can use my Sokotoa memory aid to select and apply a sine, cosine, or tangent ratio. In this case, I'm given a 41 degree angle, and looking at that angle, I once again have the opposite side. So I'm gonna just circle that and label the opposite side. You might find this helpful as you work to select and apply the correct strategy. In this case, I'm not given the adjacent side, so right away I can cross off tan and cosine because those each involve the adjacent side. That leaves me with the sine ratio. But again, let's just take a look at our triangle. I know that I have the hypotenuse. That's the side length across from the 90 degree angle. So I'll circle that and I'll label that with an H. So you can see here I have O and H. O and H pertain to the sine ratio, opposite over hypotenuse. So I can set up my sine ratio by looking at the sine of the 41 degree angle and writing the ratio as 21 divided by X. Now this ratio is a little bit different than the previous ratio where we had the x on top. In order to solve for x in this problem, I just had to multiply by the denominator. But because x is in the denominator in this problem, we have a little bit of extra work to do. Now I can take a similar approach. I can multiply both sides by x. And when I do that, these two x's will cancel out and leave me with x times the sine of 41 on the left hand side. So imagine just those two canceling out but you can see that I haven't actually solved for x yet. I still have this pesky sine of 41 degrees on the left-hand side. Now, I'm not gonna write this out with my pen, but if I divide both sides by the sine of 41, I would isolate my x variable. So after dividing both sides by the sine of 41, I end up with x by itself, and I've got 21 over the sine of 41, which is an expression I can put into my calculator pretty easily to come up with a side length of x equals 32. So just to recap, what we did in this video is looked at how to apply the primary trig ratios to solve for missing sides in a right triangle. We took a quick look at the Pythagorean theorem and we compared how the primary trig ratios relate side lengths to angles, which allow us to solve problems where angles are given. I hope this video helps. Thanks for watching Effortless Math Channel.